Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday school lesson for October the 31st, 2021 is praise God for his greatness. And our Bible scripture today are taken from the 149th number of Psalm verses 1 through 5 and the entire 150th number of Psalms. And we're still in this quarterly theme of celebrating God. And our unit of study is called to praise God. And we move along it back into the fifth book of Psalms this week. Back into the fifth book. And we go into this area that is called the Hallel Psalms, or some would say the Hallelujah Psalms. The Psalms where he's praise God, the, the Hallelujah, Yah being Yahweh, being God, the name of God, not Hallelujah me, but it's to give all these praises to God. And I know man likes to have a little praise, but we'll stand in front of the church and we'll say, give all praise, honor, and glory to God. But we sit, sit there and we won't want to get a little bit of that praise for ourselves. But hallelujah means to praise the Lord. It means to give that praise to God, give it to him. And as we give praise to God, the way that we really give praise to God, the way that we really worship God is not just when we lift our hands in the sanctuary, when we go down on our knees and, and give him and offer him the fruit of our lips as we speak. There are other ways of lifting and praising God. We praise God also in the acts that we do, in the things that we do when we help out other people, bring other people to Christ. We, and Jesus gave a, an entire chapter about that in the gospel according to, to St. Matthew about the, how the praises of God go out and how God blessed those people that please him. God is pleased with our praise to him and he's pleased when, when, we, when we are doing these things, trusting him, having faith in him, being faithful servants. We're faithful servants when we look at people and know that they're lost and they need a savior and we share Jesus with them. We don't have to pound them with Jesus. Just every now and then give a word and, and, and let the spirit of the Lord begin to work on their heart as the Lord is leading you to say something to them. Just, just go ahead and say something. How big is it? How, how great can it work? Jesus said to the people with the talents, the ones with the five talents that went out and they expanded on those talents while the person was gone. And, and when he came back, he said that, that this person was greatly blessed, said, enter into the joys of the Lord. You have been faithful over a few things. Now I'll make you ruler over many things. The Lord is pleased. When the Lord is pleased, he blesses his people. They, they, they are blessed greatly. And, and when he's pleased, that, that with, it's impossible to please him without faith. Without faith, you won't reach out to someone to try to bring them into the faith. So all of these, all of those things work together. So we get to see in this particular lesson the greatness of God, but we're in these Hallel, Hallel Psalms, which means the whole thing is about praise. It's about giving praise to God. The praise never stopped. Some say that this is a time when the people were coming back from exile in Babylon. So now as they were coming back from Exodus in Babylon, there was a time for great praise when Ezra and Nehemiah had the people together there and they, they saw their situation knowing the things that they had, they had gone through. Now they're back in, in their homeland. Now they've made it back from that, that great terrain that they had traveled over even to get there. The Lord had brought them to this place and now it is a time of celebration. There is a time of praise. There is a time to say hallelujah. That that is the highest praise that we can give the Lord, but it actually means praise the Lord. That's what it actually means. Hallelujah. That means to praise the Lord. So we get here to this first verse of this 149th number of Psalms in this Hallelujah praise. Praise ye the Lord. This is a, a declaration going out 
to all those that are listening. We find that out at the last verse of the of the 150th number. We find out that this is something that is going out to everyone and everything that have breath, everything that has a living soul within it that God has breathed life into them needs to be, should be, I won't say have to because some won't, and the Lord will still bless them because he lets the rain fall on the just as, as well as the unjust. But we should give him praise. We should give him the highest praise. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Say, sing unto the Lord a new song. This not, not necessarily can't sing Jesus keeps me near the cross because there's nothing wrong with that song. And just like it was good for those that have uh, have gone on, on home, it's good for us. But this is talking about that song, that very song can be sang afresh as we give it a renewed enthusiasm as we start to understand Jesus keeping us near the cross. When we understand what the song means, it's not just something that we've become become complacent with. We say it all the time. So and 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 I love Amazing Grace. And when I was a child, they sang Amazing Grace in the church every Sunday before the preacher preaches. Now we do it all the time now before I preach because. I want that song before I preach because the song means so much to me, but it's not a complacency. I really now understand grace. Once you understand it, once you get to that place, you have a renewed enthusiasm. You have something that this is not complacency. This is something you really understand. You understand that there is, that God's grace is truly amazing. It's, it's, it, it just reaches above and beyond unmerited, undeserved favor of God that you just can't equal up. It's a gift that God gives you. When we think about it like that, it, it, that's that renewed enthusiasm and makes that song brand new every time you sing it. It's, sing unto the Lord a new song is what, what's being said here. In other words, the old song or the old way that you were singing it, you were just opening your mouth and, and, and calling words. Now it means something to you. This new song, you have a renewed enthusiasm and you sing or you have this melodious sound coming out of your mouth. You may not be able to sing hardly at all, but when you begin to say the amazing grace, how, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind. But now I see when you begin to say those words and you start to see the situation that you were in, you start to understand how amazing his grace is. You'll be, you'll be like one of these people here being able to say hallelujah as you're singing the song or even at the end of the song. But sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Sing his praises in the congregation of the saints. Also, in this, this assembly, wherever the saints of God are, these people that are redeemed. At this time, the saints would have been those people that had journeyed back to Ju uh, Judah from Babylon, have come back. Now Persia's in charge, but, but still they've come back and they are the faithful ones because remember, some stayed in that land. Didn't Everyone didn't come home, but now these people have come home. So they are the faithful people. These are the ones that, that came back, not knowing that how, how it was going to work out, but they came back and they were the ones that would be considered the ones that had the five talents and maybe didn't know what to do with it, but just invested it in the Lord. They invested it in the Lord. And now he's telling them that because you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over men. So praise in the congregation. Have, have his praises sang in the congregation. Everyone began to sing in the, in the assembly of the saints, where the saints hang out at. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let Israel. 
the people of Israel. Now, this verse seems to be talking just particularly to them, but there is practical application for all of us also. Let Israel rejoice. Let them be joyful because the Lord has made them. Well, did he just make the Israelites? No, he made us too. He is the creator of the human race, of human beings. So it, not only do the Israelites get to rejoice because God made them, but we also get to. But the, after the colon is the reiteration of that same thing that was just said, let the children of Zion, that is the children of Israel, and now we get to be a part of it because of our adoption into the family of Abraham by faith. It, because it, uh, That's how we get into this. Be joyful in their king. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king, in their creator, in the one that, that made them, in the one that delivered them even at this time, the people that had come back from Babylon to, to Judah. So he, he had, they can rejoice in their creator. Verse three says, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. This is something that allows people to be a part of the praise and a part of this hallelujah. This, this opens the door for everyone to have a stake in this. It says, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them celebrate. This, that's, that's what praise here is in this particular verse. Now, praise, celebrate his, his name. And how do we celebrate his name? in this root moving rhythmically, that just moving around to the music, the music, letting the music move. Now, we do know about that because we, we, we can go out and we can dance to everything else, but we can also dance to the, the, to the music that is there to celebrate God, to celebrate him. And it's not something that's, that's a bad type of dance. It is something that is, that is, that is wonderful, just moving. When, when the choir is singing, they begin to rock. That is a type of dance. It is just something that is uh, ryth ryth rhythmic, and the people gets, just get into it and, and it's a natural movement if you've been in a choir for a while. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. Not only do they praise him or celebrate him in the dance, in the movement, rhythmically, but they also sing praises unto him with things in their hand, with the timbrel, with the tambourine, as it, this this percussion instrument that they bang on their hands and and I, I do too and, and so we we bang it on our hands to 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 the beat to the to the music and and it actually helps the beat if there's nothing else making a beat if the drums are not beating at that time but also with the harp with a string instrument that this make these wonderful sounds let them sing praises unto the Lord this will help the dance the tambourine and the harp. The music there helps the dance out as, as you these musical instruments get together and make this wonderful sound. So now, verse four says, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Blessed are the meek, <laughs> those that are humble for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus said there in the fifth verse of the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. But for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. And the, the Lord, the state of uh, the pleasure is the state of being or feeling pleased. It, without faith, the Hebrew writer said, as we've been talking about, it is impossible to please God. So these people that God takes pleasure in have demonstrated and illustrated faith because there's no other way to please God than to have faith. Many ways to please God, but none of them are without faith. For the Lord taking pleasure in his people. So they have demonstrated and illustrated faith in some type of way. And then the colon says, he will, after the colon says, he will beautify the meek with salvation, or that word beautify is crown. He will crown, put this over their head or, or over them. He'll crown the meek or the humble with salvation. How would he do it? 
with salvation or deliverance and victory. Give them victory over their situation because they have demonstrated and illustrated faith in God. They, and a person that is definitely dancing before the Lord, they would have faith in the Lord. You couldn't tell David that he didn't have faith in the Lord. He didn't trust the Lord as he danced, as God was allowing him to bring God into Jerusalem or bringing the Ark of the Covenant, which represented God with his people at that time, bringing God into Jerusalem. David danced before the Lord because he trusted the Lord. Now he knew the way to bring bring the Ark of the Covenant into the holy city. So, so now, these people, God will crown the, the meek, those that are humble, that humble themselves before him, that trust him in everything. They, they are going to inherit the earth, but he will give them deliverance. He will give them victory over every situation that comes and stands up against them. God is the one that will fight their battles. So if God is not going to ever lose a battle, then they'll always have victory as they stay with God in the battles that they have as, the, as God takes on the battle. It's not your battle, it's his. And verse five says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Now, this could be kind of, of, of tricky if we don't just read it and understand it the way that the hymnologist wrote it. Said, that, let the saints, those that have been delivered and redeemed, those that have faith in the Lord, that it came here, that God takes pleasure in, and which means that they please the Lord. They so he so they have definitely have faith in the Lord. So let the those that please the Lord, the saints, be joyful in glory. Or in the change of their circumstances. Now their circumstances have changed. They have been slaves and, and captive over in Babylon. Now the, the Babylonian ter territory has been taken over by the Persians and they have been sent home, those that wanted to come home. They have come home and, and now the, their circumstances have changed. And this is a reason to be joyful. This is a reason for celebration. This is a reason to say hallelujah. This is a reason to praise the Lord. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Let them sing aloud. They sing aloud. I mean, they're laying in the bed, getting ready to go to sleep, but the praise is still going on until they go to sleep. That's what this is. This, is, this doesn't have to get out there into some mysterious type of thing uh, happening here. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. They're laying in the bed and the, their, their hearts are still merry, thinking about the things that God has done for them, how he has changed their circumstances, or as it says here, be joyful in glory. Their circumstances have changed. Now they're singing. Even when they get in the bed, they got a hum going on and until they actually fall asleep and might wake up with that song still on their heart. So let the saints be joyful in the fact that their circumstances, their life has literally changed as the Lord has taken and gave them victory over their circumstances and their, their circumstances have totally changed and they sing not just in the daytime, but also at night when they lay in the bed. They sing themselves to sleep. <laughs> and, and verse the, the next verse that we go into we, we, we don't go into verse 6 of the 149th number of Psalms, but we go to the greatest of the Haleah Psalms. We get here to the 150th number of Psalms, where it starts out with that same phrase, praise ye the Lord. Now, we get the, into the, the questions asked in this particular chapter. I like the way that someone actually commentated on this. They said we have the where, the what, the, the, the why uh, or the how and the who. So the where here starts in verse one of this 150 number of Psalms. Praise ye the Lord is the hallelujah that starts this out, the hallelujah. So praise God in his sanctuary. That is the where, in his sanctuary. Where, did, where is his sanctuary? That's wherever God is dwelling, maybe in heaven or, or wherever God is because we can't 
put God in a place and make him stay right there. David said, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. God is wherever God wants to be at this particular time and everywhere at the same time. God, praise God in his sanctuary. And his sanctuary is his dwelling place. But in his sanctuary, when you and I step in, we get the repercussions of what we had just talked about in the previous verses because we have victory as we come into that sanctuary with him because we have the ultimate of protection. He is the one that keeps us and takes care of us in that place. That's how we have victory over the enemy, victory over our circumstances. We have the beauty, the crowning of, of the humble in salvation, with salvation, the deliverance and victory over everything that's coming against us as we are in the sanctuary with him because in the sanctuary, he's gonna keep us safe. Safe, uh, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. In the mighty heavens, that's the firmament. The expanse is what the beginning verses of Genesis tell us. The expanse, which is the firmament. The, the, the mighty sky that we look upon. And so all of these things that God created, we can praise him in the, in the firmament. And all of this is just to say that we praise him on earth and in heaven. We worship him all the time. Worship is always in order. Praise to God is always in order in all places and at all times. It's always a good time to give God praise. That's the where. Where? In his sanctuary and in the firmament of his power. But what is the, is the next question? Verse 2 would teach us that here in the 150 number of Psalms. Praise him for his mighty acts. What? That is the what? We praise him for his mighty acts. We praise him because of where he is in, in the first verse. Now we praise him for his mighty acts or his works, the things that, that he's done or that he's doing. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. We praise him for the works that we have seen him do. We, we don't just have to see the works that we see, and, and we are the best wants to testify about what God has done for us, but we get to read testimonies all the time in the scripture. As we get closer to the Lord, we start seeing ourselves standing with the children of Israel at the Red Sea as Moses holds a rod out over the, over the, over the Red Sea and God sends the east wind through and, and peels back the sea, dries up the bed, and the people walk through on dry land. We start seeing ourselves there, but God's mighty act. We start seeing these things happen when Jesus took the little girl by the hand and everyone had been saying that she was dead and she got up as Jesus took her by the hand. We, we get to see God in his mighty acts as we read through the scripture, but we know that he's acting even in our life because he's never let us go hungry. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him because no one else comes close to or equaling up to our God. No one, no, nothing. And that's just saying things where we'll understand it on, on a human level because we can't even put God in a place where we can, we can put him in because Jesus said God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why God can be everywhere at the same time. And so we praise him. There's no one like our God. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. And then the how. How do we praise him? Right? Praise him with the sound of the trumpet or the ram's horn as the people would grab a hold of the trumpet and that, that ram's horn. And it was there not just to celebrate, but it was also something there that was to be a warning sign sometimes. And, and the happy times and sad times, the horn was used. But now we praise him or we give him praise because of this. We celebrate God because of, of, of his mighty acts, because of his excellent greatness, because of his sanctuary, because of his firmament of power, because of the victory that we have in the, in the circumstances 
being changed in our life. So we, we praise him. So the, the horn is blown that we praise him. This is how with the sound of the ram's horn or the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and the harp, with the string instruments, the psaltery and, and the harp. And not only that, but we praise him in verse four says, praise him with the timbrel. With the tambourine, that we talked about that earlier, with the tambourine, and there's something about that tambourine, it'll help you get to moving in the right way when you begin to beat that thing to the music and, and, and you, get a, you find a beat there as you're playing it and the dance just comes on natural. You, you begin to dance. You praise him. You're giving praise to God. You're celebrating God at this time. Praise him with the string instruments. Praise him with the string instruments and the organ. The string instruments, all of the string instruments, whichever ones that you can play on with the harp, the, the lyre, the, all of these things that you can grab strings and, and, and pull them and, and strum and they begin to make these wonderful sounds and, 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 and we, we listen to string instruments now and it's something special about it because years ago in certain churches, you didn't have the string instruments playing, but now even the keyboards, they can play a little violin for you. They can get those string instruments to strumming for you. And it's, it makes a wonderful sound even in our church services, but we, they play, uh, praise him. It's a way of praising him with those string instruments, with those instruments when they strum and make that wonderful sound. But not only that, but also with the organ. Uh, we would love for this to be the organ that, that that somebody told me years ago, the only organ that they'll have in heaven is a B3. And, and, and I, I, I almost believe that. But still, this is not the type of organ that, that they're talking about. This would be an actual wind instrument, an instrument that you, you blow wind into to make the sound. So this, that's what the organ is at this time. But we know an organ nowadays as a, a different instrument and a special play, person being able to play that thing, play the keys, and actually play the foot pedals too. So we praise him with the string instruments and also with the with the wind instruments blowing in, into the instruments to make the wonderful sounds to keep the praise going on, to keep the celebration going on, to just celebrate the Lord. But also, verse 5 says, Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the loud cymbals, these, these percussion instruments. Now, this may bring in the thought of the drums, but we see this to be the cymbals. The cymbals make, make the, the loud tinging sound, this, this, this sound that, that, that is very popular in the churches today. Even when you play the drums, you have the cymbals sitting there and you play the hi-hat and it's, it's, it's there uh, hitting there as the snare is being hit and, and they make most of the sound along with the bass drum. So play, praise him or celebrate God upon the loud cymbals, these percussion instruments. But not the, that's not the end of that verse. It says here after the colon explaining it further saying, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. These loud clashing cymbals, these, these that are, make a loud sound when you hit them with the drum cymbal, with, with the drumsticks, that make, make a, a loud sound, almost rattle the ground, make the ground shake up under you. Praise him upon the loud cymbals and praise him upon the high sounding cymbals, making that loud crashing or clashing sound as they hit those cymbals. And then we get down, we've already dealt with the praise him where? The praise him in, uh, with, with what, for what, which was the mighty works or the mighty acts. And we dealt with the, the, the praise him how, and we just dealt with that with the instruments. But now we get to praise who is to praise the Lord. Verse six, verse six is the one that we we hear all the time. But now we get to see this is you, you and you. Verse six says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. 
everything that is living, everything that is a living soul, the saints and sinners should be giving praise to God because everybody that woke up this morning is a recipient of the grace of God. Everyone can say just like some do with their nose turned up in the air, say I'm blessed and highly favored. The sinner is just as blessed and highly favored as you are because they have another opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and by his grace, his unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor, he'll save them. He'll give them the gift also and also place his Holy Spirit inside of them to seal them to the day of redemption. So everyone, everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Every living soul ought to be giving God praise with everything in them. There should be no shortness of praise given to God. And, and you hear sometimes even people that haven't trusted the Lord as their Lord and Savior, they, they seem to know a little bit more about him than some people in, in the churches. And they have a little bit more respect for him sometimes. So now all they need to do is have someone really teach them about the person of Jesus and how his saving grace works so that they can see how amazing his grace is. Praise ye the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Give him the highest praise. Praise him. This act of worship or acknowledgement by which the virtues or deeds of another are recognized or extolled. That's to praise. Praise the Lord. We worship him for who he is and what he's done. We, we do. Praise the Lord for his greatness. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that this word will sermon on our hearts and minds and help us to get in the right frame of mind so we can understand that everything that has breath should be giving praise to you. Lord, we do pray that you will search our hearts, forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School Lesson Review. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.